Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and happy Sunday to everyone. In today's video, we're going to be going over part one of how to reduce your chances of catching the coronavirus, which I assume is a goal for everyone and all of their family members. So let's just have a look at some basic ways that you can reduce your statistical risk of catching this virus. So inside your home, you want to make sure that nothing is coming in from the outside and of course that's pretty obvious but you know how do we actually do that and i kind of wanted to walk through some steps that you may need to take up as this situation progresses hopefully it doesn't really get to this level but if it does this is just kind of a quick breakdown of how to make that work for yourself so I think it's really smart to set up a decontamination area at the front of your home or even actually at the back if you have a rear door to your home that you can access easily. Um, and, and I don't mean, you know, a full bolt, like battle rattle station. I mean, just a basic area where you have some supplies. So in that deca decontamination area, I would have things like towels, a shoe bin, a waste basket, some hand sanitizer, Lysol spray, gloves, robes, sheets or clips, a box cutter and a bucket with bleach and water. And we're going to go through real quickly how you would use those things and why you would need them. All right. So let's just say, you know, we're not in a lockdown situation and you're still being asked to go to school or work or just carry about your daily activities. You still don't want to bring anything from the outside into your home. So this is how my family and I will execute you know, decontamination whenever we're coming back into our home as the situation progresses. And so I thought it might be nice to just have a kind of step-by-step -step guide. So phase one would be, you know, you open the door, you grab your, uh, grab a towel, two towels actually, if you have them there, and you lay them out on the floor. And then disrobe, take everything off and drop it on one of those towels. And then go ahead and get into either a robe or a towel, um, anything that you might have at the front door. So once you've done that, go ahead and take your shoes that you've just taken off and put them in a bin. Now, what I have is like a little $1 kitty litter bin because it's wide and flat. And so you could just put a bunch of shoes right next to one another. So I would recommend picking that up from the dollar store if you think that we may come to a place where you need to do this for yourself. So take those shoes and put them, you know, soles down in the bin and then put your bags, cell phone and keys on another towel. The point here is to make sure that you're basically building a barrier between anything that was outside and anything that's inside your home. So after that's done, you're going to want to use hand sanitizer um, and then go to your bathroom. And so you're going to use hand sanitizer because you're not trying to contaminate your bathroom before you've taken a shower. So before you get in the shower, Go ahead and take that robe off and put it in another designated basket in the bathroom. So that way now you've moved through your home and hopefully if there was anything on you, you've left it at that area. Um, I would wash my hands thoroughly after I put that robe into the basket and then go ahead and shower, you know, obviously pretty meticulously and make sure to really get in there, wash your hair, do all that. And then when you're done, dump that robe. Um, from that basket, so not touching the potentially contaminated robe, but dump that robe into a washing machine. And now we're going to move into phase two of this decontamination. So phase two is going to be now that you're clean, go back and disinfect everything. So you're dressed. I would not recommend wearing loose clothing that's going to be coming to contact with these things while you're doing this. So step one would be to put on some gloves and then to spray down book bags and lunch boxes with Lysol. So not a Lysol wipe, but the actual spray, um, just because it's going to make it easier to do that. And then once they're sprayed down, I would open up the lunch boxes, like kids have little zippered lunch bags. And then I would dump all that food into a trash bin, add utensils and the lunch containers to a bucket and you know, then you're going to fill that bucket with water and bleach. But again, this is all in an attempt to contain anything that may have come into contact with something outside and potentially be, you know, have something on it that you don't want to come into contact with. And guys, I know even as I'm sitting here recording this, this sounds a little bit over the top, but if this were the situation, there would be no measure that would be too far. You would really just want to 
make sure that you're taking every little step to protect yourself. So once that's done, I would Lysol wipe your phone because phones are filthy anyway, your keys, and then the outside of any purses that you may have had with you. And of course, that's just, you're trying to take anything off of there. And then you're gonna take those shoes and spray the bottom of them with bleach and then go ahead and put them somewhere else to sort of you know cure and take all the items and so I would grab like the four corners of the towel, pick it up, take all those items, place them in the wash with the robe and immediately wash them. Um, yes, this is gonna mean more laundry for everybody, so maybe not a bad idea to pick up some extra laundry detergent. When you're done with all that, I would go ahead and clean the floor and the area surfaces. So if you put your bags on something at the front door or you put your keys down on something where there wasn't a towel between some part of your home and what you were taking off, you would wanna wipe those areas down with a bleach water solution or some kind of disinfectant. When you're done, dispose of your gloves and wash hands really thoroughly. It's so important to say again that you know gloves, and I know this is common knowledge, but I have certainly heard of situations and seen actually in emergency response where people reuse disposable gloves. And th that would be an absolute mistake in this situation. So please do not do that. So just get rid of it and, you know, meticulous hand washing. Mail packages and groceries. So this is, you know, things that we have to come into contact with. We can't really stop the influx of these things coming into our homes, but we can be careful about how we deal with them. So when you're going out to the mailbox, I would put on gloves, you know, then come back to that stated decontamination area, open the mail, pay your bills right there, put back in the mailbox and then dispose of all trash, including the gloves immediately. So, you know, again, containment of the interaction. So you, you paid the bills, you got the mail, you put them back in the mailbox, get rid of the gloves, wash your hands thoroughly. This would also be a wonderful time to consider switching over from paper bills to e-billing. Not only is it better for the environment, it will stop the majority of bills from coming to your home. So that's how I would handle opening mail. Now packages, you know, we live in the age of the amazon.com boxes coming to the house all the time, and I am certainly guilty of that. But when you open packages, you don't know where that was, what facility it was in, how it was handled, any of that. So assume that there is a risk for exposure and act accordingly. So when you're opening packages, and this is why I said have a box cutter in that little decontamination area, again, putting on gloves, spray or wipe everything that comes out of that box with bleach or Lysol type wipes. Um, you don't have to buy Lysol brand. You know, you can get off brand, that's fine. Nobody cares, just make sure that it, it kills 99.9% .9 of germs. It should say it on the bottle. As soon as you're done doing that, cut down the box and throw the box and the gloves in the trash immediately. And then come back into the house and wipe off that box cutter, put it back, wash your hands really thoroughly, just make sure, okay, great, that particular interaction is done. Let's leave any germs from that where they belong, which is not on your body. Again, this is a great time to switch to online shopping, and I'm gonna to touch on that in part two, but there is really no need at this moment to be going out to malls and just things that could just generally increase your level of exposure. So let's just switch to online shopping for right now and make your life easier. All right, groceries, we all have to have groceries. Now, I personally recommend already at this point, I think it's wise to have a deeper pantry than normal because of the situation and how quickly it is developing. I don't wanna find myself in a situation where there's panic buying and then I'm out there with the masses having to deal with crazy amounts of people buying and fighting and just panic in general. It's just not healthy for your mind and it is completely unnecessary. But as this situation goes forward, say that you had exhausted all of your resources, someone in your home is going to have to go for groceries at some point. Um, and, or even, you know, I know in some countries they're delivering supplies to people. But still, again, if there's a risk of exposure, this is how I would handle it in my home. So have a large plastic laundry hamper, you know, the old school ones, the, the big white ones or whatever color, um, and have that at the front door. And you know, put a towel down, same kind of idea as when you're coming into the home, 
and place the bags on the towel. Again, creating that barrier between anything that was outside and anything that's inside your home. And I would use antibacterial hand gel because you've been touching God knows what, and then go ahead and put on some fresh gloves. So once you're done with that, I would pull the items from the bags. And as I'm doing that, I would wipe each of those items down with a bleach or disinfectant type of solution and place those disinfected items into that laundry basket because it's just gonna make it easier to move all of the items from wherever your decontamination area is to your pantry. Now, a lot of people would say, and I would probably go along with this, that you should still let those items sit and sort of, you know, cure or just just have a little bit more time where, where that bleach is in contact with um, potential pathogens. So something to think about unless you're completely out of food and you're, you know, you have to restock your pantry immediately, I would not allow yourself to get to that situation for the aforementioned reason, which is if supply chain disruptions are in play and they very likely would be, you don't want to go to the store and not be able to get what you want. So anyway, um, when you're done with that, throw your gloves away, wash your hands thoroughly and add the items to your pantry or some kind of a staging area that you've set up maybe like in your garage where you can just put excess supplies. All right, other tools to keep you safe, okay? You can do everything that you want as far as controlling things coming into your home, but there's also other stuff that you can do to just give your body a boost and just keep yourself in good order. So here are some other tools to keep you safe. For your body, stay positive. Your, your mind is such a powerful tool. It's probably the most powerful asset that you will have outside of good health for just maintaining your stress levels and keeping yourself well. Everyone knows that if you are under huge amounts of duress and there's just a lot of anxiety, there is an increased risk for you to become ill. So stay positive. You know, if you're watching channels where there's a lot of like fear mongering going on, I would maybe kind of avoid that. And I don't know what your definition of fear mongering is. I, I don't personally think that when people are telling the truth, that's fear mongering, but I know that there are some channels that are putting out videos, which I think are more scary than informative and so that's the kind of stuff that i'm talking about um, get plenty of rest when you are well rested your body is in optimum performance it's going to perform at its best your body's ability to fight off infection is going to be increased you're going to have reduced levels of stress you're going to eat better you're going to be in a better mood so getting plenty of rest cannot be overstated here please do that for yourself Taking vitamins, things like vitamin C, vitamin D, all of those things are important. They boost your general immune system, which is, of course, what you're going to want. If you were infected with the coronavirus, you want to make sure that your body's in the most advantageous position to help see you through to the other side safely. Drinking water, we hear this all the time, but this is so important. Again, for just flushing toxins from your body, keeping your mind right, keeping your energy levels up. So just drink a lot of water. I know this is a hard one for a lot of people, but this might be a great time to reduce or completely quit smoking because this is a respiratory type infection. If you are a smoker or if you are going to continue smoking, you are probably going to be at an increased risk because your system is somewhat compromised in that way. So I'm not going to go on any kind of a rant about smoking. That's a personal decision. But this just might be a good time to consider that that may not be the best thing that you can do for yourself in light of what is happening. Limit alcohol intake. And I know if people are thinking, oh, I'm going to be trapped in my house for weeks, you know, I'm going to drink more. And, and I completely appreciate that, but I think it's just not a good idea because when you drink more, you're, you know, you're bringing your body's ability to handle things effectively down. You're also going to create, you know, potentially some depression if you're over drinking. So I'm not saying don't drink. I'm just saying drink responsibly and limit alcohol consumption because it's just not good for your body or your soul. And it's not good for her, the way you may interact with family members in an already extremely stressful situation. Exercise, so, so important. I don't care if you, I mean, I personally, you know, I get up in the morning and I walk from one end of my house back and forth, back and forth, actually several miles some morning while I'm thinking and trying to meditate and get organized for the day, there are tons of things that you can do to exercise at home, even if you have absolutely no equipment. Again, all in an attempt to keep your body at peak performance so that not only may you provide care to somebody else in the event that they become ill, but that your body is positioned to be 
in a place where you can stay well. Um, okay, and then eating as clean as possible. Now, I know if we're eating a bunch of kind of stored type of food like canned soups and all of that, there's so much sodium in a lot of that stuff. And if you already ate a clean diet and then suddenly you're forced to eat a bunch of sort of processed foods, your body's already going to be struggling with that. So that's why drinking water again and exercising would become a very big deal because weight gain you know, can lead to a lot of unhappiness and a lot of increased tension, just things that you don't want in your life. So eat as clean as possible and you know, obviously combat that with a lot of water, rest, and exercise. All right, so inside your home, there are just some general things that you can do. Replace your air filters if they're old. Um, go ahead and run an air purifier in your home. Maybe run a humidifier because, and again, as this virus is somewhat, um, well, we know a lot about it now, but not enough. And there is some speculation that humidifiers, that this virus does not operate well in a high humidity or high heat type of a situation. So if you think running a humidifier would help, go ahead. Um, this is a great time to just organize and clean your house in general, just making sure that all the surfaces are wiped down. And I would certainly recommend stocking up on over-the-counter medications, things like a cough expectorant like Robitussin, um, fever reducer for both adults and children, and any kind of anti-diarrheals and um, stuff like electrolytes, you know, Pedialytes, things like that. In the event that you did become ill, you don't have to just have the coronavirus. You know, it's still flu season. You could still catch the flu and find yourself not feeling so great and you don't want to be out there trying to find medication and then become exposed to something else, all right? Now, while you're at home, monitoring yourself is going to be really important because the last place you want to be right now is going to a general practitioner or to the hospital for reasons that obviously you're going to have an increased level of exposure there. So unless you really, really need medical intervention, I personally would try to stay out of those kinds of places. You know, first off, stay informed about what's going on. Watch the mainstream media, watch citizen journalists, watch YouTubers, read the news, do your homework, stay informed. That'll just make you feel better. Get a well-rounded picture of what's happening in the world. All right, monitor your vitals. That could become important if you do fear that there is, that you've been infected. Um, monitoring your vitals principally your blood oxygen level would be very, very important. Again, because this is a respiratory type of uh, virus, understanding what your blood ox is is gonna be real important to you. Just have a journal where you can keep journals of your symptoms. So if you do feel that you're starting to feel unwell, start to write it down, because you may think that you remember, but four days from now, you're not gonna know. So if you do have to present to any kind of a clinic or hospital, for treatment, you want to be able to give them as much information as possible so that you are the most credible patient that you can be. You know, on Monday, my fever went up to 101. By Tuesday, there was diarrhea. But, you know, I hate to talk about those things, but guys, these things are part of what's happening here. So just keep a journal of your symptoms. That's just good measure for yourself. And have a plan. What are you going to do if you do become ill? Are you going to go to your general practitioner? Are you going to go to your local hospital? Is there a more remote hospital that you could go to? What are you going to do? So just make sure that you have a plan. Um, and this brings me to blind, excuse me, buying either a blood pressure cuff because obviously if your blood pressure starts to come out of normal limits, that might be a time where there needs to be some kind of medical information, uh, excuse me, intervention. And it would be difficult to ascertain by you know just trying to figure it out all by yourself. So blood pressure cuffs are around $30 and blood oxygen monitors are around $20. You can still buy those on Amazon, Walgreens, Walmart. I'm not gonna get in the business, have I said this in another video, about adding links because none of these videos are about generating revenue. This is just about me giving you information. So if you wanna look up blood pressure cuff or blood oxygen monitor, Amazon is a really safe bet. All right, and then just two quotes to close. You know, safety doesn't happen by accident. If you, if you keep yourself well while everyone around you is falling ill, it's probably because you are doing something right. So this is a time to be more cautious than not and really not concern yourself with what other people may or may not think about how you are executing the plan for yourself and your family because ultimately you are not responsible to them you are responsible to yourself and to your family. So keep that in focus as we go forward. 
And then uh, just a question for you, you know, it says the government's first duty and highest priority is public safety. Now, you know, we could have a three hour conversation about whether that's actually what's happening. I'm in the United States, but um, the reason I put this here is, you know, if government's first duty and highest priority is public safety, what should yours be? Yours should absolutely be to institutionalize safety practices within your home. And then of course, at any time that you have to leave your home. And that's what I'll be talking about in part two. So if you guys found this video helpful, please give it a like um, and leave any questions that you have below and I will get back to you. And if you wanna be notified when I upload my next video, just click subscribe and then turn on that little bell notification. I would appreciate it if you found this valuable, if you share it with other people. I hope you guys just feeling, you know, I'm trying to put out these videos to just help people feel a little bit more in control of how they may handle a situation before it's knocking on their door and it becomes scary. Just let's just walk through, hey, how would I deal with this in my day to day life and understand that it isn't this terrifying monster. It's this thing that's causing us to have to change our behavior in response to something that we were fighting an invisible enemy here. So there is no measure at this moment that I feel is out of line. You know, whatever you think is right to keep yourself and your family safe is what you should do and let judgment be for another day and don't concern yourself with that. Believe in yourself and your ability to protect your family because it is ultimately your responsibility. Thank you for spending some time with me. You guys be well and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.